Who's moderator? That would be you because I just talked you into it two minutes ago. Oh, yikes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. It's Wednesday, April 14th. Um, I am Michelle. I'm going to be moderating, which I learned a few minutes ago. And uh, I remembered as I remember things sometimes. All right, so um, I'm going to paste the meeting link or meeting agenda in the chat. Um, we have an SMI controller SDK update. We're going to talk about the conversion logic in the SDK. Um, we've got some updates from Bridget and uh, Michael on the multi cluster stuff. And then we have a question around custom auth support, auth, auth filter support. So uh, let's get started. Nick, feel free to take it away. So I added a couple more controller bits and pieces to uh, so the conversion logic. So it's about 50% complete now. The, uh, from a conversation we had with, with Michelle, we decided that- Sorry, Nick, you're really quiet. Could you possibly speak a little closer to your mic? Sorry, it's this laptop. It, it's just awful. Much better. A pile of junk that needs to be burnt. Um, so, yeah, so, so we're about 50% about through the conversion logic. Uh, there's just a couple of APIs left to do. From chatting with Michelle, we decided that we should pin to the latest version of the, the SMI API. That still means you can convert between V1 and V4 and V4 and v10 or whatever we, we end up at but the kind of the base version is is going to be uh, alpha 4 which is this is the most mature version um and we're, we're currently working how to get that conversion logic merged from the the go sdk into the new controller sdk so we can have a single repo rather than having to maintain two different things benefits for that are that then we can use kube builder to generate all of the the crds and things like that uh as opposed to how it's done at the moment which is a manual a manual process uh hey i can give an update on that um i've been working on uh moving the um apis into the controller and i do have a pr so i'm trying to work all the way through um like at least getting the traffic split uh example working um so there's a work in progress pr there um, I used Kube Builder V3 because uh, uh, because um, V3 has uh, good support for um, multi-group APIs. Um, so that was the reasoning and it's, it's the freshest one. So did that. Um, I did run into a ton of issues with um, the uh, code generator uh, script. So um, if anybody struggled with that or has experience with that, I'd love um, a second pair of eyes because I don't know if I'm doing wrong or if there's a bug, but I definitely opened up a um, an issue in the code generator repo. And that's basically the tool that we use to generate the clients, informers, and listers um, from uh, uh, APIs uh, automatically. And that's it for me. Michelle, if you want to ping me a DM, we can I can maybe help you debug that later on. That that code generation script is is pretty pretty hacky. Sounds good. Thanks. All right, moving towards the next topic, which is the conversion logic, and I think. Um, Nick already uh, gave us an update on that. Nick, if there's anything we can do to help, please let us know. Um, this is something that uh, Open Service Mesh really needs like pretty immediately. So we'd love to use like the SDK and we'd love to do anything to help with that stuff. So um, is what is in there right now ready for review? Like, can we- um, Yeah. I was just looking at that uh, earlier on. I think it is. So I've got my my PR as marked as work in progress. I think the sensible thing to do um, is actually to merge the conversion logic that I've done so far into the SDK. And then we can raise further PRs based on the other stuff. But it, it also means that 
there's a, a better guide on how to contribute to that stuff. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Okay, uh, so hey, I'll go ahead and review that. Yes, Michael. Hey, hey, Nick, would you mind maybe, I know it's a little bit of overhead, but I think it's worth it, at least in the beginning now, to our surface or flag these, um, you know, if there's anything where we can unblock you in terms of reviewing on, on, on the Slack channel, just saying like, hey, you know, there is a PR. Um, I, I don't know, otherwise I, I feel like, you know, we're always waiting like a week or two usually oh there's no there's no block the the pr i raised i only raised it as a work in progress just to give exposure to what was going on it, it just isn't, oh, okay it sorry i thought okay i thought you yeah you know okay no i the, the intention was to to like finish all of the conversion logic and then just merge it but um i think we can probably merge the partial pr because it, it it's fine um so i'll, I'll I'll tidy that up in a bit, and then I'll I'll get that ready and request some reviews. My bad for misunderstanding you. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, on that. Anybody else on the controller or the SDK? Anybody want to share their thoughts or um, ask a question at this at this time? All right. Thank you, Bridget. You want to take it away? Sure. Yeah. So. Um, if you're looking at recordings of this meeting and you're thinking, wait a minute, you've just had one last week. Why are you having one again? The one last week was the SMI multi-cluster working group meeting. It's currently gonna run every other week at the same time in this uh, time slot on this channel in the weeks we don't have the community meeting. So basically this meeting is currently a weekly meeting um, and uh, Michael led the very first one, and I think he could give us a short update as to what is going on with this whole multi-cluster working group. Michael? Absolutely. Thank you, Bridget. So we had an awesome discussion. Um, I think that was really uh, productive and, and concrete outcomes to two, um, at least within the people who were present last week, consensus was that, yes, A, in terms of the, the issue to 12 multi-cluster, um, yes, we as a group want to uh, do that in, in SMI and in terms of um, what is in scope or out of scope, I think we, we uh, didn't really have a, um, or, or at least we, we said um, that certain um, heterogeneous environments of cross compute is, is important, but we didn't really have a, a like consensus on, on what exactly the scope is. At least that is my interpretation. Please correct me if, if I'm wrong. So I would like to um, you know, bring that back to the, to the entire group here. Um, the, the, the meeting notes uh, are below. You, you can see the details there. Um, I think we should just continue in that way to essentially find consensus in a smaller group and whoever is, you know, has, is a stakeholder, has something they, they want to uh, do there, implement or whatever, please show up every other week. Um, and then um, whenever we have consensus on a certain bit, then report it back. And if there is, is, is a need to kind of like um, open up something and saying like, oh, you know, the, the wider group or the, all, all everyone represented here, uh, has, has an issue with that, we can definitely, you know, discuss that and, and reopen that. But in general, I think we should trust the people who actually put some, <laughs> some work into that to, to decide, yes, you know, that's in scope or not or whatever. At least that's, that was my, my approach to, to the whole thing. Um, yeah, and any questions or any comments on that? Is that a, a viable way? Is that a, a way people are fine with running things or do you want to see a different way or, I mean, we, we kind of like make it up as we go along, right? We don't really have a, a charter or, or anything we might also want to consider, or, or maybe I'm missing something, but I, I don't think that we so far have defined the, the workings of working groups and what, what's the, you know, the way how we report back and find consensus or whatever. I think we're just kind of like trying to follow best practices around CNCF. It looks like you had a pretty vibrant discussion last time and captured a lot of it. So I would say, Guess you're doing that again next week and we'll see what comes from that. Fun. Uh, excited to see uh, a lot of progress here and a lot of, of folks feel bought in on kind of like the macro vision. So yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks. So Michael, where are the notes? Are those, is that in the- Just below, just below. 
Oh, I see. If you if you scroll down to last week, it's um, everything there. Gotcha. Okay. And so, yeah, so I've got a little bit of catch up to do, but um, one of the things that I think is, I assume, is implicit to this, at least from what I see in the GitHub issue, is well, speaking of charter, is an expansion of SMI charter beyond Kubernetes, because um, it's like pretty. It's been explicitly stated once more than once that like yes. this thing is Kubernetes only, and so. Yes. Very, very, I, I hesitated to bring it up right away because we haven't really uh, addressed the scope yet, right? So the first consensus was essentially, yep, um, there is interest, we want to do that. And then we didn't really wrap up the scope, so it would be a little bit premature, I think, at the current point in time. But you're absolutely spot on. As soon as we have the scope defined, um, saying like, yes, this, you know, it is indeed not just Kubernetes clusters, it is, I don't know, anything from a VM to a function as a service to communities to maybe even methods, who knows, uh, like any kind of compute, uh, then obviously, yes, that would require us to change the chart. Absolutely. Uh, it, all right, I guess I'll catch uh, last question real quick. So I, Sergio um, Pozo was there, so that, that's great. So the, in reflection to Hamlet, what was the, what was the, what was the synopsis? The... We didn't really um, yet get to the point where you say like, okay, how, how do we actually go about, what, what are the, the options that we have? I think that's part of, of the you know, ongoing homework to see like, what are the options? Hamlet, in my understanding, absolutely is an option. Um, but I think we should be open-minded in the sense of like, that we you know, immediately jump to conclusion, like, oh yeah, it's about, you know, rubber stamping Hamlet and off we go, right? We should say like, okay, what is the, the, the solution space um, and the, the problem space? What, what, what is the scoping there? And then say like, okay, here are the, the two options, three options, whatever, whatever we can do. And then um, I think that is something once we get there to that stage that the entire group should, should you know, say like, okay, do we have consensus on, um, yes, it is indeed going beyond communities because as you pointed out, um, very rightly, the, 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 the quite some uh, implications there, right? Thank you, Michael. Cool. All right, anything else on multi-cluster? I, uh, I do think that we, if we keep, keep that momentum that we actually have for KubeCon, which is first week of May, um, at least something that uh, maybe we can actually share in the booth or wherever we can say like, hey, you know, should you be interested in, in SMI uh, beyond a single Kubernetes cluster? Um, you know, please uh, be part of that, right? Be part of, of our effort here. Just, just a thought. Yeah, so Michael, actually, that's a great point that there's, um, we have the ability to uh, create a survey if, for the booth. And so that, yeah, nice. That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, moving forward, uh, Nuno, feel free to introduce yourself and um, ask a question. Okay, hi everyone. So I'm Nuno Gerdes. Uh, with me is also Andre Fonseca. We are both from uh, Millennium BCP, which is a bank in Portugal. And the, uh, the, my topic for today has to do with an issue we have on GitHub which is related to uh, supporting a custom authorization filter. Our use case is that we want uh, Envoy to pass the requests um, through a set of policies that uh, an OPA sidecar will evaluate. So this, uh, we, this is how we expect to do uh, authorization for the requests that we are delivering to the app. And um, for us to do this pattern, um, it's something that we would like to uh, use uh, SMI and uh, OSM as well uh, to, to support this. But we believe that this is something that's currently not supported and defining this custom authorization filter and would like to, to 
have your thoughts on this? I think it's a, a nice idea. Um, I'd, I'd certainly support the inclusion of custom filters in the SMI spec. Um, I think the maybe the easiest way to do this is if you have an idea on what the, the shape of that would look like for you as a consumer, because I think that's always a great place to start, is to maybe create a... Um, like maybe even a PR. PRs are pretty good places to to actually, you know, discuss working working versions of the spec. Um, it feels like that there's maybe a natural place for this inside of like the um, HTTP root group or the you know, the TCP root group, but maybe not. Um, I think that's as I say, it feels like a very consumer led thing. So if you'd be interested in doing that, I'd. I'd certainly be, be happy to, to kind of chat with you over the, try and help shape that out. Sure, thanks. Um, our, I think our basic talk really uh, was how to package this and something that could be uh, talked about. Uh, people look at it and, and get inputs on. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a really good idea. I mean, I, I think the sort of uh, custom custom filters and extensions are something that folks are just going to naturally gravitate towards, uh, specifically as things like WASM matures as a, a standard. Um, so I think SMI supporting that certainly, like Envoy right now has the has the capability to to accept um, HTTP request filters inside of Envoy. Um, which is configurable for any of the on-point service meshes. I believe Linkerd has a WASM capability as well, maybe. I could be wrong about that. So so I think that that's the key thing, that whilst Envoy is your generic, your, your sort of destination technology, the specification that we propose as SMI has to encompass something which is abstract enough to consider service meshes which don't support Envoy. But, but I think it's totally doable. Yeah, I think Nick summed it up really well, and I echo um, the same thoughts. Uh, at first, I was like, okay, well, the custom auth filter, you know, that's very implementation specific. Um, but I mean, at a high level, yeah, like if the, the end user wants to be able to configure that through SMI, that's something that we should have some mechanism to do. Uh, but it would be really helpful to understand what like the UX looks like. So how does it actually fit into the uh, traffic target object or the um, HP route group or whatever, whatever it would go into. So I think having just even a sketch of like what, um, what that, what you would want that experience to be like will give us a better uh, way to have a, you know, conversation, a further conversation about, you know, what is the right layer of abstraction and how much information do we need to put in this and, and that kind of stuff. So um, I'm very, I'm very supportive of a pull request and, and moving or having an async conversation on that PR going forward and then syncing back up um, at this meeting. Will do, thanks. Thank you. Um, there was a, a different comment around spiffy identities as well. So I think uh, on that, on that uh, same thread. So um, someone wants to propose a PR for that as well. That would be great. And we can have a conversation about that on the PR as well. Um, all right, moving forward. Uh, SMI conformance, Lee, feel free to take it away. I was just typing a message to Nuno and Andre. I'm, I'm most supportive as well. It's a great, great topic, great suggestion. Um, on, on SMI conformance, uh, I don't know if you all are sick of talking about it, but uh, I am. It's um, it's ready, or you know, like it's um, it's time. I think that the tooling is at a point by which, and has been for a little while, at a point by which, it's ready for. Um, individual service mesh teams that are interested in owning their own compliance. What's the right, anyway, th those that are interested in running conformance tests themselves and self-reporting 
Um, there are a handful of contributors who've worked on this particular functionality of, of Meshery um, that are ready to engage. Meshery is, uh, was up for review uh, for donation to the CNCF last month, and it's up again. They, we didn't um, get to it this month, so it's up again here in a couple of weeks. Um, I figured I'd say that just because I don't know, just to help clarify the intention of the project. Um, it focuses on, you know, largely like two specs at the moment, um, uh, SMI and specifically conformance and then SMP um, on, perf on performance. Um, to engage, like, uh, turns out this, this darn thing is not necessarily a small, it's a bigger piece of functionality than, it's, it's, a, it's a decent sized piece of functionality. I think that um, there's probably, there's probably two, two steps to um, start to engage. One is that Nginx folks had reached out um, a, week and, a week ago, um, quite earnest to, to move forward. And for them, the next steps are a little bit um, um, challenging because they don't, you've got to send a EULA to get to their software, which makes, which I guess will prove the point of it being good to empower them with the tools so that they can run it and self-report. So actually, now that I say that, that that'll that's not as much of a. It's been a hiccup for us in terms of doing those tests. But um, so I was considering. So so I think I, like Michelle has two great questions, both of which I was um, fumbling over just before this meeting. Um, and how, how to engage and how to get started. My recommendation is to go. Is um, two things. One to go. Try the tool and find a bug. <laughs> and uh, you know, there's there's probably one or two in there. It's to try the tool and then either, depending upon if there's a multiple of the service meshes that are wanting to, you know, the implementations that are wanting to talk about it, that we would schedule a, some other time to walk through it, uh, either individually with those teams or just centrally as a as another set of series to engage with multiple meshes at the same time. The, the idea here is that it becomes a self-service tool that you're empowered to, that each of the teams are empowered to run and, yeah. And so, nice. I, I find that really interesting, really exciting. And I have one immediate, like, please, please, to request, um, can we please add um, a legend that says, you know, what exactly are the semantics of X? <laughs> and so on, like, it's, if I look at that, I, I was like, what's the difference between full and half one, I guess? Like, you know, you, you want to make it super clear what, what the semantics of that is, that there is, I mean, it's, it's you have it down there, is it learn more about that? But if you have that, the problem that I see is that this fits perfectly in a tweet, right? Someone <laughs> taking that and without providing the context, tweeting it, it's like, what does that even mean, right? And if you have a legend that directly sits next to the table saying like, like this is the semantics, you can still argue like, oh, is that true or whatever, but at least it's clear, like this is what it means. That's my little feature request here right away. But awesome work, thank you so much. Lee. Great time check real quick. Um, so I think, uh, oh, Bridget moved the flagger comment up. Um, so I just wanted to get a quick update on uh, the flagger and SMI um, uh, conversation. Um, so Nick, do you have an update by any chance for us? Um, also very interested in helping out there. Um, we have folks that can work on it on our side. So we really just need to understand like, uh, I don't, we don't want to step on anyone's toes. I don't know if there's work already been done. So, um, Nick, you have any information on that? Did you get to have a conversation? No, I didn't actually. I apologize. Um, let me ping him from from my, my understanding. The well, so from not from my understanding, the the Linkerd provider is actually SMI. So I believe. I, but I hope that it's actually minimal effort for Flagger just to add an alias to provide or to create a provider of SMI to the uh, functionality that's that already exists around the Linkerd provider, um, and that obviously wouldn't break Linkerd and it, it adds future spec. Um, Spef, Stefan's probably the best person to, to to speak to, and maybe we can invite him 
to the call next week as well to, to talk about Flagger for folks who don't don't know what it is. Yeah, that'd be great. So let me just um, get you two on a thread going. Um, I also think there's some discussion we can have around just having our own SMI provider because we, for example, in OSM are on V1 Alpha 2 and want to get on V1 Alpha 4 in our next release. And when we were talking about the conversion logic, we decided that, you know, the hub would be V1 Alpha 4. So it makes sense maybe potentially to have like the SMI provider on a like on the more updated. Yeah, I think, I mean, the good thing is, so when uh, the V1 Alpha, uh, sorry, Flagger currently supports V1 Alpha 1, which is the version that the Linkerd is pinned to. The version console supports is actually V1 Alpha 4. So when I built the console controller, when I was using it and dog fooding this with Flagger, the conversion logic inside of the controller, the new controller SDK does actually manage to convert a V1 alpha four down to V1 alpha one successfully that Flagger can run, which is actually great because it's minimum effort then for, for Stefan. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, um, we'll move this conversation async. Uh, who wants to moderate next week? Well, I'll, I offered to do it this time and then I totally forgot. So let me offer to do it again and I won't forget. Thank you, and who wants to take notes? can take notes and Thank keep you in great. mind, Nick, you've signed on for multi-cluster working group next week. So. <laughs> right. Thank you. And, um, okay. And, uh, uh, Michael, you want to give us a, or is it Michael or Lee? Uh, who's the next topic it's on Cooper. <coughs> Lee. Lee. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Lee, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, hey, briefly today, today's the last day for us to drop some content into the into a Dropbox folder for the booth for the project pavilion booth. And so um, I don't know that anyone has done that just yet. They'll have our the logo up there and otherwise. Um, but so so the quick call to action, there's, there's a link in the meeting minutes that goes to a doc that has other links that talk about if we'd like to do a, a survey. And, and if we would like to do and if we have other content to put in there. There's a we do have project office hours scheduled. And so a few slides for that, those office hours to kind of speak over uh, would be good. And those same slides are great, make great content for the booth. The, you know, a good starting point might be copying from last time. Okay, who's on the hook for actually doing the slides? Because I don't think that crowdsourcing is gonna work here. So I think Lee, you're gonna have to point to someone and be like, can you do this? And that's just gonna have to be the case. Or if you can do it, it'd be great. But if you can't, then you just need a point and be like, please. And uh, that, I don't see any other way to do it. Sounds good. I'll Thank you. Yeah. We can, um, we can uh, continue this on Slack so we can definitely get that content over. It'd be really good. Thanks for overseeing everything there. Michael, you have something? I just wanted to say thanks, Lee. Thanks for keeping our collective. Seriously, thank you. You gotta get on it. All right, um, tell us what to do. All right, uh, that's it for this meeting. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for joining. I will see you next week at the multi-cluster meeting and the week after at the regular community meeting. So, bye, everyone. Happy meshing, bye.